Hey, everybody. This is Chris. And Kathy. We wanted to take a minute to thank you all for tuning in. We appreciate every listener and are grateful for this platform. Please help us share our vision by subscribing to our show through your favorite streaming app. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Petability Podcast. You can also support the show by making a donation. Simply go to our show notes and click the link at the bottom of the page of any episode. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to Petability. I'm your host, Kathy Simons. And I'm your host, Chris Cranston. Our podcast provides interviews and information to help your pets live their best lives. Good afternoon, Kathy. Good afternoon, Chris. How are you doing today? I'm just fine. You? I'm excited today. We've got a really good show and a great topic and a fantastic guest. Would you like to hear about it? Of course. (laughs) Today, we're going to be interviewing uh, Rich Allen, who is a certified fitness instructor and the founder of Pet Fitness. And Pet Fitness is a website that's geared towards getting your dog in shape which is fantastic because we just had a show on pet obesity, right? So we know that we got, we've got pets that are out there that need to get in shape. So I'm pretty excited to hear more about this company that was founded in, in 2020 with the goal of changing the belief that your pet just needs a walk. I perused the website a couple of times in the last few days, and the programs are made to fit your dog's lifestyle. And they offer indoor games, outdoor games, as well as brain games, which, you know, we are big fans of um, getting that mental, you know, expanding that mental energy. When you mentioned obesity, I was thinking, and enrichment. We're all about enrichment. We're all about enrichment. And this this actually pulls it all together. You know, on Pet Fitness, they pull it all together, the the mental part and the physical part. And so what what I did today was I went to the website, and you can look your 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 dog up by breed, which I like. I, I really like that we're we're breaking them down by breed specific um, dogs. So I went to the pug section and we did the twenty minute quickie workout, which was actually it was a lot of fun. So we did we did a jog for five minutes, but I will tell you that I could not jog for five minutes. <laughs> but it was sort of walk jog sort of thing because I my endurance isn't good. And then like five minutes of figure eights, five minutes of, of foraging and five minutes of spinning, you know, clockwise and counterclockwise, counterclockwise. And Ooh. he's out. Yeah, he's out. <laughs> well, um, and, and to your point about, you know, you're like, oh, it was kind of a walk jog for me because I wasn't in great shape. I think uh, that's one of the questions that I would like uh, Rich to answer for me, because I know that's a concern of some of my clients. You know, I can't bend over like that. I can't, you know, run that fast. I, you know, so I'll be curious to see, you know, how he addresses right. that. Right. And my dog was all in. He he had the other thing that was great about this is we had fun together. You know, we did 20 minutes of something together. Um, And it was active and it was fun. Bonding. Um, It was bonding. Exactly. So please welcome Rich Allen to the show. Welcome to Petability, Rich. Hey, thank you so much, Kathy and Chris. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. You bet. We're excited. Yeah, we're excited to have you on, Rich, because I'm just going to have you jump right in because I I am excited to get right to the, you know, the meat of this and to the website of Pet fitness, but why don't you tell our audience a little bit about your backstory and who you are and and how you got here? Sure. So I'm 34 years old now. I'm actually just celebrating my birthday a few weeks ago. Um, So when I was 20 years old, I started a fitness blog with my childhood friend at the time. Uh, We were both in college. This is in 2008. Uh, I was sitting in a pizza shop, uh, my business partner at the time, his name is Jared. Um, we were sitting there at a pizza shop and we said, I got a text message one day, and this will kind of tie into pet fitness. I got a text message that said, Richie, how do you do, it was like a bicep curl or a bench press, I forgot what the question was. I turned to Jared and be like, I got it, we got to start a blog. 
So we, along, make a long story short, we created a fitness blog called Muscle Prodigy back in 2008. It was just an informational-based website, online magazine. You know, we wanted to be like the next men's fitness, men's health. Um, what happened was over the next few years, we really grew the business. It went from, you know, a passion to really a professional endeavor. Um, and since then, we created the brand Muscle Prodigy, which had uh, really throughout my whole 20s, online informational-based products, um, apps really geared towards the element of human fitness. Now, flash forward to around 2019, I actually sold the business, really wanted to focus on other ventures. Um, and really, it really brought me to, to pet fitness today. So uh, just using my experiences with human fitness enabled me to really think of the idea of pet fitness, which I think actually is a much better market um, and uh, a newer market. And I'm really excited to bring that to the world. So you launched this in 2020, I think I read, yeah. Yeah. and and I think you had kind of an inspiration um, yeah. that, uh, so tell us all about that. Yeah, so it really started with really my love of Driggs, my dog, and uh, I mentioned to you earlier when we were speaking that today is the four-year anniversary, March 29th, actually it was March 29th, 2018, when I brought Driggs home from, he was uh, brought from Puerto Rico after the hurricane. They he was uh, eight weeks old at the time. They found a litter. They found his mother and his brothers and sisters and, you know, litter of puppies uh, stranded after the hurricane, you know, abandoned. Um, this great organization, uh, Ollie's, Ollie's Angels and Sato brought the puppies to New York. I got Driggs. I went to JFK Airport, picked up Driggs. And I fell in love with him. And, you know, ever since having him, I, I just really wanted to take care of him. I wanted him to be healthy, to be strong, um, to be happy. So he really was a huge inspiration for pet fitness. Um, and really how the idea started was it really happened before COVID. Around in 2019, really right before like January 2020, I actually saw, I forgot why I was uh, searching the web, but I saw an article that it referred to a study actually from the, the Kennel Club. It was, it's the UK's largest organization dedicated to the welfare of dogs. And they talked about this huge study they came out with in 2016. Um, it was over a 10-year period. They examined 190, it was about 190 breeds and about 49,000 dogs. And they found, it was a huge uh, study, that the lifespan of dogs are actually dropping. The average lifespan is 11 years, and it dropped to 10 within the span of a decade. So it's showing that, you know, life expectancy is going down, regardless of all the advances in medicine these days, right? You would think the opposite. It's actually getting worse. So from there, that kind of triggered my thought, like, hey, what's going on? Why isn't this talked about? And then I started doing more research, and I saw that, like, I think it was ben Benfield Pet Hospital. They found that uh, the lifespan of overweight dogs, I think it's about two and a half years shorter on average than lifespans of dogs with a healthy body range. So, um, and, and keep in mind that now half of all dogs are considered overweight, and 25% of them are obese, right? So what's really going on with all the advances in veterinary medicine, et cetera? Um, so it really got me thinking as someone who owned a human fitness company, right? I pivoted and said, hey, I want to start a pet fitness company um, because there's such a focus on supplements, on dog toys, on foods. But what about the actual exercise itself? And that's what really catered, you know, my thoughts. Hey, I want to do pet fitness and, you know, the rest is history. And ever since then, I've just been, you know, building this product and uh, really building up a great team and, you know, excited to, to launch it to the world. I'm glad that you did, Rich. You're absolutely right about the study. Um, I think it was the uh, lifelong study on labs, if I'm right, Chris, about uh, the, these dogs that were overweight. They had a lifespan that was two years shorter than mm -hmm. the average dog than the average dog of appropriate weight. Um, and this is something that we can control. Um, maybe we can't control everything. Maybe we can't control um, our dog's genetics. Maybe they're predisposed to things like cancer or hip dysplasia or something like that. But this is well within our control to keep our dogs lean and active. So this is something we can do. So I'm, I'm interested if you could... Um, Maybe you could delve in a little bit and just tell us about the programs on pet fitness and what's your message. I know you're we're trying to to get people to be more active with their dogs, but um, what problems are we are we trying to solve here? Yeah, so I want to first cater this by saying, you know, I'm not a vet a veterinarian. I'm not a dog trainer. You know, I'm not a canine rehabilitation specialist like yourself, but I'm a guy who loves my dog 
And I noticed something in, in the industry, right? There's a lack of focus on the exercise. And as someone who's a, pers- a certified personal trainer for humans, I understand enough about human anatomy that it can relate to dog anatomy. And I'll explain. So like humans, right? Dogs have two types of muscle fibers. They have fast twitch muscle fibers and slow twitch muscle fibers. You know, fast twitch are fast and powerful. Slow twitch are more for long distance and endurance, right? And then also like humans, dog have, dogs have three main types of muscle tissues, smooth, skeletal, and cardiac, right? So just from that, I know that humans and dogs are more similar than people realize, right? So I saw that, you know, most dogs are not fit, you know, are, you know, 50% are overweight, 25% are, of those are obese, right? And the life expectancy is going down. So I saw that, hey, there needs to be more of a focus on, on the exercise. And b- how Pet Fitness is created, it's basically based off four components of conditioning for athletes, right? Which is endurance, strength, balance, and flexibility. And all those are critical to humans. So knowing what we know about dogs having similar anatomies to humans, right? The same can be said with dogs with the type of exercise they need. So that's what kind of brought me to the general gist of Pet Fitness. And obviously, you know, I'm here to tell you more about it specifically, but that's really the general gist of it. I'm also rich from the people side of things. So I was a physical therapist, primarily in sports medicine at the University of Colorado. And, you know, it wasn't a huge leap for me to apply physical therapy principles to mm-hmm. our animal friends. And it sounds like, you know, you're you're doing a similar thing. Um, their anatomy is very similar. Um, it was easier for me to to learn the differences because there were so few. So I can really appreciate that. So up to this point, I don't think that we've actually said the website name. Can you tell us what that is, Rich? Yes, it's pet.fitness. So there's no .com, just pet.fitness. Got it. Got it. And uh how, you know, how does this work in terms of uh, it's a website? Is it something that people purchase? Um, is it subscription based? Um, you know, do they have access infinitum to, you know, all the, the tools that, that may be captured on the website? Is there an app? I'm, I'm just a little confused about that. No problem. So pet.fitness, it's a one-time purchase of $97. And what you get access to is to a member site. So it's not necessarily an app that you would download on, you know, the app, the iTunes store or through Google, right? You would just go to the website pet.fitness. And once you, you know, you, you're able to purchase, you get access to the, to the member site. Um, and on that member site, you get a username and password and you're able to log in. Once you log in, you get, uh, you, you get really two, uh, written guides that you can read over, um, understanding more about the plans. Um, the principles of it. And then you, and that's what we call them the learning module. So we give you lear- ways to learn the material and understand it, right? And then the second side of it is we actually give you a video, a videos, and we actually took the top 200 dog breeds in the world and we create, and you can select on that section on the member site, you select the dog that you have. And not only do you get the, the learn modules where you learn about it, but you also get the videos that show the exercises. Um, and we have videos that break it down between um, strength, endurance, flexibility, balance, and brain games. And you also, and not just you can, so you can pick certain exercises to do with your dog, but we also give you something called quickies, which is based on, you know, your real life pain point as an owner. For example, I can't go outside to train my dog today. It's bad weather. We'll give you an exor- exercise to do inside that's really specific to your dog's breed. So, uh, yeah, we really give you everything you need in one member portal for everything to keep your dog fit and, and healthy. This is very reasonable, too, for all the things that you get on there. Yeah. Uh, cause there's also some really good blogs, you know, um, yeah. on the website as well, Chris. Yeah. Yes. I was going to remark about that as well. I'm like, wow, $97. That's a steal, especially for Kathy and I out here in the Boston area. Everything is so expensive. So I'm sure you probably took a, you know, some si- sort of algorithm and, and came to that price point that would be affordable for people across uh, the, the world, really. Yeah. And you said it yourself. I mean, you know, we want to keep it affordable. Um, and we give you so, we don't just give you, you know, for one time purchase, you don't just get access to your specific dog, right? Your dog's breed. It's any dog breed. You can, it's yours for life. So you can get access to all 200 different 
you know, combinations of workouts based on the 200 dog breeds we have, right? So, um, yeah, we definitely think it's great value. And uh, out of everyone who purchased it, everyone's loved it. And we're so happy to, to help all these pet owners and, and their dogs. The tutorials were really easy, too. That was one of my favorite. I was like, okay, I'm going to watch the 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 tutorial on, on the quickie here to do with my dog today. So I think that's very reasonable. And it's exciting, too, because I think that, you know, your pug or my pug versus the workout of maybe somebody's uh, border collie is is going to differ like we talked about so um but i'm also i'm also interested rich are you do you consult with other professionals to put these programs together are you talking with veterinarians um animal professionals dog trainers have you have you pulled them to to help you with getting these uh programs together yeah so we've actually worked with a few vets and dog trainers to review all the plans that we have and, and read over the information we're actually publishing those in the middle of april so in about two weeks we're just finalizing the logistics and everything but we're going to be publishing them but yes we've had vets and trainers both look over the plans and, and really like what they see and we're really happy that they're a part of it and you've consulted with uh medical doctors on the human side as well right Yes, uh, some orthopedic surgeons for sure. Because like we said before, you know, the anatomy is somewhat similar to humans and dogs. So not just consulting with vets or dog trainers, but, you know, other doctors for, for humans like orthopedic surgeons, et cetera. So yes. I want to just circle back to the, the videos a second. So am I understanding that when you click on one of the 200 dog breeds that the video that that I am going to see on the website is of a Cavalier, for example. I have Cavaliers doing the particular exercises. No, actually, what I've done is we just show all the work. It's actually my dog. I don't think I clarified this. So in all the pet fitness videos that you're seeing, most of them are my dog. Um, and some of them are uh, actually two or three other dogs that we work with to just demonstrate it. But we don't, we're not actually, we don't show that specific dog in the video. We just show the dog doing the exercise that would work for that specific breed. Okay. So to paraphrase, you select the dog breed because the exercises are specific to that breed. That's going to be more appropriate, like Kathy said for her pug versus a border collie versus a German short hair pointer versus a great Dane. Correct. But the demos are using a handful of the same dogs just to show us people how to go about doing this exercise, what it looks like. Correct. I, mean, I think the reason really for that was I, I would have loved to get, you know, 200 different dogs <laughs> well, to appear, but I just logistically, I couldn't, but that was honestly, that was something I was, wanting to do yeah. but it just logistically it just made more that's sense huge, to use my that's dog huge, and... <laughs> yeah that's a huge undertaking hey, Rich, there's still time there's still time there is always time <laughs> and I was the of the we're all we're actually always striving to make the product better we've actually only been to market for about two months so everything with adding you know even more vets we want to have not just the programs that, for example, you know, I created or, you know, consulted with. But we actually want to have even, even people like you, canine practitioners who can post plans themselves, their own pet fitness workouts, dog trainers, vets on their platform. So that's what we're really going towards down the line. But we just wanted to start with like the all, you know, the pet fitness workouts. But that but we would love to work with, you know, trainers that can use their name and create their own plans and someone like yourself. You know, Kathy and Chris making their own plans on pet fitness. That's the wow. ultimate down the line. Um, but this is a, a great start with what we have so far. But we're constantly improving the product. And uh, we're excited to show everyone, you know, as we roll it out. Rich, you, you don't know us very well yet. You, you may regret saying that. <laughs> 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 we'll have dogs hanging by their toes. and uh, Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, so is the program that you're describing on your website for healthy dogs only and if so how do you ensure because anybody can go to the website and pay their 97 dollars? how do you ensure that a particular pet owner is is not misinterpreting the information and maybe applying some of these exercises you know inappropriately to their pet who may you know have an injury or or a disease process going on that uh, either they're not privy to or they think that the exercises might help yeah, so we always preface this by we always say in the disclaimer too. We have disclaimers throughout the product, just like any fitness product. We always say you know it should be for healthy dogs only. Um, that really, what I mean by healthy is if a dog's overweight, they obviously should do the program because it helps with fitness, right? I'm more talking about if you have joint issues, 
muscle pain in your dog. And obviously with dogs, they can't really speak to you. You know, they, they, they right. hide pain a lot more than, you know, an average person, obviously. So to answer that, I always say whenever beginning pet fitness in any way, whether they're whether you think they're healthy or not, to talk to your vet, get a vet assessment to check baseline health, talk to the vet about the plans that they're doing in pet fitness, and most importantly, just watch your dog and know your dog. Um, and, you know, that's really the truth. Yep. So you're giving them pointers and maybe some things to look for that might be indicative of of the things that you were describing, like joint pain or muscle pains. So Correct. Kind of, okay, good, good, good. And Kathy and I are all about that because as – uh, rehab practitioners, you know, we always say you have to start with the vet, you know, for legal reasons, we have to get a referral from for every pet that we treat. And uh, we support that, you know, we and think, I think that's a good thing. Too. Sorry, yeah. I think what's important, that's why we have, as I call the learn modules, because we don't just want you to follow the exercises that we give you based on the brief, but we want to, you to understand why your dog is doing it and to understand possible, you know, drawbacks or things that, you know, to watch out for. If they're limping, if they're hopping, if they're just, if they're not using their hind legs, right? That we, that's why we have the learn modules on the site. Besides just giving you the workouts, we want to also teach you what to look out for, 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 you know, the reasons that you mentioned, right? So that, that's kind of how we go about it. Excellent. Excellent. And Rich, I see that, um, that soon you're going to be having some uh, exercises for cats. Is that true? Yeah. So, you know, when I first created the, the product, I was thinking about the, the name dog fitness. But honestly, you know, our goal, you know, I'm a dog lover first and foremost, and our plan was really created with dogs in mind. But with that in mind, cats are a huge market. And I see so many people that don't know what to do to exercise their cats. So, yes, our plans are really after we start rolling out pet fitness uh, for dogs, uh, that sometime next year in, in middle to late 2023 to really start building out plans for cats and, you know, down the line, other animals as well. But, yeah, starting with dogs for right now. I can't wait to see that. And I think that um, that perhaps there may be some misconception that cats – um, are lazy or that cats yeah. sleep most of the day, but they really aren't lazy and they absolutely need to exercise. And if they don't, they can end up with some of the same problems that our dogs end up with. They can end up being obese. They can end up with diabetes. They could end up having behavioral issues. So we need to exercise our cats as well. And um, if you need any help with any other animals, let us know. Cause Chris and I, um, we trained a mini pig last year. We did a mini, right, Chris, we had the mini pig oh. that we trained for the, <laughs> so and Kathy so now has birds in her clientele and, and, and guinea pigs, birds. rabbits, yeah. you name it, so, we've done it. Yeah, and they all need that. Um, um, in the U.S. Yeah. alone, I think there's there's about 50 million households owning a dog. And I know in the U.S. there's 30 million households owning a cat. So there's a huge market, so of obviously, of cats. Right. 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 But, Rich, I think, I think the number one pet, because uh, we had this previously in a podcast, is a goldfish. So I want to challenge you and see if you can come up with an exercise program for our, our fish friends. Well, one million households, I know that, in the U.S. own a fish. So there's definitely uh, a big... Okay. Reptiles, reptiles are number four with about 400,000. So maybe with reptiles, we'll do it too. Good. <laughs> okay. no. That'd be excellent. Excellent. Um, so also on your website, Rich, I see that um, when you come right to that home screen, there's some um, there's there's these little squares that say, you know, that we can help solve problems like excessive barking or leash pulling or, uh, you know, weight gain, some behavioral issues. Now, do you have programs that are specific to helping with those problems or is the exercise program really going to be the key factor in resolving those problems? Yeah, so it's more, that's a good question. It's more about the exercise itself or we're, you know, just like you know, if you go for a run, and I kind of did this from a human aspect, you know, if I have a lot of energy, I like to go and exercise. After exercise, I'm pretty calm. The same can be said with my dog. Like every time I take my, you know, I, I have my dog do some sort of exercise outside, it tends to always calm them down, kind of makes them content, right? So it's really a product of that. We're not claiming that it, it's it's for specifically for preventing barking or leash pulling. It's just a component of, of down the line, exercise will help that with those issues. If that makes it's, sense. it's a side effect. Yeah. Right. And, and I think people, it's a good behavior is a side effect. Yeah. yeah. And we actually want to plan to uh, a lot of what we're doing too. We want to show, we, I do plan to publish studies on the website that really show that exercise helps with things like this. Right. So there will be more studies coming down that kind of address this as well. But I think that's important that you are connecting those dots because I, I think Kathy and I, discuss this a lot, um, you know, even with our, our clients going through rehab that 
maybe can't be as physically active as we would like them to be, but there's always something you can do to change that behavior. So if they're whining, if they're frustrated, if, you know, like you said, your mental stimulation games and portions of the exercise programs that maybe they can do, you know, that, that uh, would allow them to, to feel better. And part of that, you're talking about yourself running and that's like the runner's high, right? You get some endorphins and enkephalins kicked off and, and it's calming and makes you feel better. Well, I always say that, you know, a fit dog is a calm, happy, and disciplined dog, and this is no exception. So that's kind of what pet fitness does is, you know, it helps, you know, can help your dog. But most importantly, calm, happy, disciplined, and healthy, you know. so that, and, that's really and, cool. and there's also that adage that says a tired dog is a happy owner. Yep, yeah. That is true. <laughs> you can say yourself. I'm not sure if it was Kathy or Chris with uh, your dog. Did uh, the quickies, and now your dog's calm and, and relaxed right now. So he's sleeping. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. So it definitely helps in that aspect. <laughs> I might join him after that. It was like twenty minutes of workout for me too. Um, and and my dog, you know, and I think again, I'm going to use the word misconception, but perhaps there's a misconception that pugs are also lazy or that pugs aren't as active as some other dogs. But my dog is very active. Um, he really enjoyed this twenty minute quickie, and it was the perfect amount for him. Um, and now he's he, he's taken a snooze. In fact, he may have just snoozed through his lunch his lunch time. So that's oh a big deal. Oh my gosh, that I is know, a big deal. That doesn't happen. But um, in any case, I also was hoping we could talk about. I was reading on your website about um, body adaptation. Can you talk a little bit about the body adaptation, Rich, and yeah. and why you've designed these exercises? Um, as you have. So that's a great question. People always ask me, how did I decide, you know, how did I come about creating plants for certain breeds? How did I come up with it, et cetera? So really just to go back in ancient history, right? It's just through molecular evidence, right? We know that dogs are descendants of gray wolves. And I think it was domesticated about 130,000 years ago, right? So if you look at it like this, why are toy poodles and German shepherds, why do they have such little in common it's because the way they were created, right? Selective breeding by humans have resulted in artificial evolution, leading to many types of breeds. So that's basically what happened. So as a result of all these different breeds, what I did was I kind of focused on, hey, so when I was creating Pet Fitness back in really early 2020, I was really researching deep into this um, and learning about their innate abilities, right? So how I created Pet Fitness, you have the high energy needs, the dogs that benefit from more intense exercise, right? So who are they? There's the working dogs, right? The Alaskan Mountain Muno, the, the Bernese Mountain Dog, the Doberman, right? They're mainly, these dogs historically were used for search and rescue missions, guarding livestock, um, pulling heavy objects, like they did a lot of sleds, right? So these dogs are really powerful and strong. So that's, that's like the component of how I created exercises for working dogs, more powerful, more explosion-based exercises. Herding dogs, they're more bred to herd livestock, right? So they're like sheep dogs, collies, uh, shepherds. They're always moving. They need max, and they also need a lot of max mental stimulation just because of, of their, you know, how they were, you know, created, right? Uh, just from evolution. Then you have the sporting dog. And this is a, a good one to talk about. You know, they're, they're really good. If you have a golden retriever, right? Um, they, they're probably more likely to want to swim. Not all golden retrievers will be swim that will want to swim, but statistically golden retrievers are way more likely to be swimmers than other types of dogs. Why is this? Because it's just their evolution. They were sporting dogs. They were used hunters on the field. Uh, they have great water instincts. They excel on the field. So these dogs like pointers, retrievers, um, setters, I think spaniels too. Yeah. They can do more swimming based. So, okay. So I created if they're a sporting dog, we know that they're more likely to do swimming-based exercises, so that's more of a focus. So that's how I kind of did it with those. Then you have something like terriers, right? And, you know, these dogs were kind of bred to kill vermin, dig out rats, foxes, birds. They're always chasing back and forth. So with terriers, just evolution, right? So a lot of the exercises are constantly going back and forth, back and forth. Then you have hounds, similar. They're, they're, and I can go more deep into it. There's scent hounds versus sight hounds. One are based on tracking their scent. Another one is based on, you know, using sight. So they have different types of exercises. Those are more of the higher energy needs. And then you have more of the lower energy needs. You know, there's toy dogs like um, Maltese's, I think, or, or Yorkies. Those are low maintenance dogs. They don't need a lot of play, right? So they're not going to have as much intense exercise. And then what's probably the most important is 
I can never say this word, the brack dogs, brack, so the brachial cephalic, yeah, they're, pugs, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. So they're, they're short noses and flat faced dogs. So they, they'll have breathing issues and they're more likely to overheat. So like bulldogs, boxers, I think pugs too, actually, right? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So those exercises you probably see, we don't make the exercises intense. We're not going to have them run long distances because, you know, just for breathing issues, more likely to overheat. So more shorter distances, not as intense. So that's really how it is. Um, and there's, there are some exceptions to the rule. For example, pit bulls are, are known at our characters, like technically. But for the purpose of pet fitness, we actually classify them as more of a working dog because these are stronger dogs. And you see a lot of them wear weight vests. They're more powerful dogs. So going through, there are exceptions to the rule, like, for example, like pit bulls. But that's why in the plan, we, we try to make it as closely as possible to the 200-something breeds. Mm-hmm. And then I think the, the most a really good question is, Driggs, like my dog, he's a mix. He's not even – I had to get a DNA test with him. So he's a really a half pit bull half Cocker Spaniel. He's like really 60% Pitbull, 30% um, Cocker Spaniel, 10% German Shepherd. So what do I do? As we say in the plan, you should always, if you have a mix, you should try to understand what their genetic makeup is to be able to cater a plan around them. So with Driggs, I do some Pitbull exercises, some exercises that are good for Pitbulls, some that are good for Cocker Spaniels, right? I kind of mix it around. So with with the mixes, it's a, it's a little more complex, but that's kind of the basis that we give you. Otherwise, we give you 200, you know, for the 200 set breeds of dogs, we'll give you a plan for each of them. So hopefully that can explain a little bit more of the background of how I created the plans. And, you know, there, there's a lot more, there's subcategories, et cetera, but that's the general basis. Right. And and back to Kathy's question, I know I read about this too, regarding adaptation. You're trying to do exercises that are going to uh, evoke different parts of the dog's body to act and react versus doing the same monotonous motion over and over again. And I think this is where you you get kind of your benefit to doing an exercise program versus just walking or running your dog. Um, you can get overuse injuries with that, but also you're not working in different planes. And to your point earlier, fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers, you know, power and strength versus flexibility and endurance. Um, I should be letting you answer this question versus me just going on and on. But am I on the right track? Yeah. So I think actually what you said was really critical. I should have touched on. Um, so just like bring it back to what I said about humans and dogs, right? Slow twitch muscle fibers, fast twitch, different types of muscles, et cetera. So just like a human, and this answers the question, if you wanted to get in shape, and this is kind of really the real way that really helped me think about pet fitness as well, is that I'm someone that's been you know fit most of my life. So I definitely understand it too. If you walk every day, are you going to get max fitness? If you are as a human, if you're just going to take a walk every day, because people think, oh, I walk my dog. Why do I need to do pet fitness, right? I walk my dog for long walks or even jog with my dog for, I jog with my dog. I run with my dog. Okay, but if you were to walk every day yourself or run every day, are you going to look better than someone who goes to the gym and does, you know, uh, a range of exercises in addition, in addition to cardio. So that's kind of the that's kind of the basis behind it is that a walk is not going to get max fitness for your dog compared to a range of different exercises based on endurance, strength, balance, yeah. flexibility, and mental training. So. so if you went to the gym, you'd have your you do your arms, your abs, yeah, your legs right. you'd have a more uh, right. balanced routine. Yeah. Correct. And the thing is, you know, obviously you can't, dogs can't squat. Like they could do, we call something called doggy squats, right? We make your push puppy mm-hmm. pushups, but they don't have, they can't train like humans, obviously. So we're just basing a lot on those types of movements. And, and, you know, and so we create different, we have almost 50 right now, about 52 total exercises that you can do that uh, are, have a range of categories. So there's really a type of exercise for really every type of breed. Nice. I remember I always use this analogy when I'm working out with people because I would say when I was at the University of Colorado and I was working a lot with the student athletes, you know, you had these really muscle bound people, but, and they look good. Like you, you kind of slipped it in there. You're like, you know, would you look as good as, you know, if you didn't go to the gym, well, these people look good, but they had maybe zero or very little core strength. And uh, no flexibility, 
You know, they weren't necessarily doing a well-rounded program. And then I saw them as a physical therapist because they, you know, injured their rotator cuff or something. I mean, they could, you know, do bicep curls all day, but the rotator cuff wasn't kicking in to stabilize the shoulder girdle. And, you know, they got a supraspinatus tear or something like that. So, you know, I guess I'm just trying to piggyback on on what you're saying and that uh, doing balance programs and addressing, you know, strength and endurance and flexibility and ensuring that every, all the joints are moving appropriately and so forth is, is great. And then along with that, you're getting all this mental, you know, stimulation too, because the dogs are trying to think because you're asking them to do something new, you know, as you engage in these programs. And, and, uh, you know, I always say the mental trumps the physical. So when you're exercising your dog's brain, that is fantastic. And I also think um, what's important here, too, is that sprint brace training versus long distance. So I always actually put this on my Instagram, a couple of videos on Go Pet Fitness, that's our Instagram. Um, we talk about fast twitch versus slow twitch, right? So if you look at marathon runners, long distance runners, look at their bodies compared to sprinters, you know, more explosion-based exercises, right? It's why, why do they look different? If you, if you see like an Olympic sprinter, they look they look very they have in great shape. They're super fit, super ripped, right? Not that your dog can really, it's, it's not, it's, it's a little different for your dog. Um, like you're not going to, your dog's not going to become a bodybuilder, right? But what I'm trying to say is if you compare a marathon runner to a sprinter, it's the difference is, is the way they train, right? So that's why doing sprints is really, really important for dogs to do. And a lot of people don't. And my, the whole point of creating pet fitness before I really wanted it to get really in depth for the different types of workouts based on breed, my initial uh, thoughts was, and, and my intentions was just to create a way that's a different type of exercise than just walking or taking your dog to the dog park. The dog park is good to get, you know, you can definitely, your dog can sprint around with other dogs in the dog park, but you also risk a lot of diseases that happen. Dogs, I, I know dogs that gotten hurt in dog parks, yeah. injured. So you can't just rely on dog parks. So that's why like sprint based training in pet fitness is very important because it's not, it's very different than just a traditional walk or a long distance, right? So that's a, a big component of, of pet fitness is a lot of the sprints. And you'll realize you can tire your dog doing sprints a lot quicker than you would making the dog run long distance, right? Mm -hmm. So that's something that, you know, I, I'm proud to put as part of pet fitness. And yeah, you know, I hope that makes sense with that, with that question. You know what I, I'm thinking as you, as, we're, as you're talking, Rich, is like, how great is this? I mean, as a rehab person, what I'm looking at is how great is this that we start these dogs on, you know, when they're they're younger and healthier and start them on these well-balanced exercise plans for for the future, for how they age. Because senior as dogs go into their senior years, they're going to lose strength in their hind end, uh, typically first before their their front end. Um, they need core strength to be able to get up from up and down um, and just to have some kind of balance program to keep them strong, strong overall throughout their lives yeah. and how helpful that will be for them as they start to age. Yes. And establishing, yeah, I was just going to say, Rich, establishing some of that motor memory too. Right. You know, if they right. can do it well when they're young, then it's mm -hmm. going to be much easier for them to do as they get older. Yeah, well, in terms of age, we we don't, in pet fitness, we always say to really start your dog on the plan when they're fully grown, right? That's between, what, 12 months to 18 months, give or take. So we we always suggest that, you know, your, your pet is fully grown. You can start doing, because I remember when I got Driggs and he was about three to four or five months old, I wanted to go jogging with him. And, you know, it's not a really good time to take your dog jogging when they're five, six months old, more long distance. So I really waited for him to become like a really year old. Then I started doing more intense exercises with him. So it's, it's average between one year to 18 months. That's when we recommend uh, dogs can start doing the plans. Obviously, they should still consult with their vet. That's a give or take one to year to 18 months. And then in terms of uh, older dogs, you know, typically when dogs are senior citizens, we recommend them doing more low impact exercises in pet fitness. And we kind of list those in the plans. Um, so small dogs are considered senior citizens. I think it's around 11 years of age. Medium, I think is about 10 years, large breeds, eight. And I think giant breeds are about seven. We specified it in the plan. So when your dog reaches that senior status, that's when they should do more low impact exercises in pet fitness. Other than that, we don't really give specific exercises based on age. We just kind of give that, that guideline to use. Mm. 
Right. And, and you do breed and activity level. Correct. And, and I think that, you know, to your point, um, we always say age is not a disease and you can have a very active, you know, senior, like you said, low impact is great because most dogs are going to have some arthritic changes by the time they, they get to those senior years. Um, and we want to protect, protect the cartilage that they have, but you know, you can have a very active older pet. You could have a very inactive you know, younger pet and, you know, and size doesn't matter, you know, cause again, those little terriers are just little motor boats and, you know, and again, you could have a, you know, a greyhound or, you know, an Irish wolfhound or something that's just kind of doe dee doe. So, you know, it doesn't mean that they're bigger, that they're more athletic or vice versa. So anyway. Well, also with uh, something, I just want to, Specify this too with like a boxer, right? I believe at the top of my head, they're they're considered working dogs, but for in the purpose of pet fitness, we say they're brack, right? Because they they have problems breathing, so we actually classify them in the plans as more of a brack than more of a working dog because of that. So we definitely take it into account, like you said, activity level. We try to go as detailed as we can based on you know two hundred different dogs. Um, so like I said, there's there's exceptions to the rule, um, but yeah. So Kathy, you know how we're all about physical and mental exercise as we're talking about today on this very show. So what a great time to mention our sponsor, one of our two fantastic sponsors, which is a dog's best life box.com that has a subscription enrichment box for pets. They have one time monthly or quarterly seasonal subscriptions the price is right. You cannot get this type of quality product if you were to buy it individually for this package price. If you use the promo code PETPOD22, P-E-T-P-O-D-22, all capital letters, you'll get a 10% discount on your order. And, and just for our listeners, a special gift that is a fantastic treat pouch that includes it has a built-in squeaker i've never seen this out there i mean this company really strives to have products that you can't typically get at your local pet store or the big box store go to a dog's best life box.com and you will not be disappointed this is another good point in the show where we could talk about our other sponsor who i love so much because You know, what better way to exercise your pet when the warm weather's coming by going swimming or boating? Uh, So I'd like to take a moment to talk about Heads Up Pets Water Collar because I feel so passionate about this product because this product is saving lives. There are over 5,000 dogs every year that drown in, in swimming pools. And that number does not include dogs that drown in lakes, rivers, streams, or ponds or the ocean when they're boating. And so I feel really passionate about this, you know, and uh, one of the things that's so great about the Heads Up Pets water collar is, you know, your life vest is great, but it, the one thing it can't do is keep your dog's head and, and nose above the water. So please check out our friends at Heads Up Pets water collar. When ordering, use promo code PETPOD22, that's P-E-T-P-O-D-22, to get your 10% discount and help support the show. So Rich, can you... Can you tell us, um, give us a little bit more detail about the exercise programs, the cookies and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. So we have pet fitness, as you know, is about 200 different breeds. And then let's say you choose uh, a golden retriever as your breed. What's going to happen is you're going to see a range of things on the the video page. We're going to give you golden retriever workouts for, we call them quick scenarios or quickies. These are owner pain points, right? So we have four types of owner pain points that we provide for golden retrievers. This is an example using golden retrievers, right? And all the, the owner pain points are, are the same, but the, the breeds are different. The exercises are different based on the breed. So for example, if your golden retriever has the zoomies, we're going to give you a five minute indoor workout. Why five minutes? Because it's on the shorter side, it could be done indoor. You can't really do something for 20 seconds and have them calm, as opposed to making it like five minutes and fun. That's the dog, my dog has a zoomies. That's a five minute indoor workout. The second thing is, let's say your golden retriever can't go outside to, to work out bad weather, it's snowing, whatever it may be. Um, we'll give a 20, then we, if you can't go outside, we'll give you a 20 minute indoor workout. Keep in mind, these are pain points. So you have the choice to pick what you want to do for that day. 
So besides the dog has a zoomies or you can't go outside, we have, if you're too busy, we'll give you a 10 minute shorter workout to do for your golden retriever. And the last pain point, if you're ready to go full throttle and commit and you have the time, you can do the 20 minute outdoor workout for pet fitness, which is we consider it ready to commit. You're ready to take your dog you know, to do pet fitness. So those are four owner pain points. Zoomies can't go outside, too busy, and you want to do the full plan. Those are the four. So that's the first aspect of it. The second aspect of it, if you don't want to follow these quote unquote pain points that will actually give you all of the strength, all of the endurance, all of the balance, all the flexibility, and all of the brain games and allow you to choose the exercises to do, right? The quickies are just an easier way to get exercises based on your breed. But if you want to pick them yourself, there's a lot of dog owners who just want to choose the exercises they can do. We'll have you do, you'll pick between endurance, which examples could be running exercises like uh, sprint, stairs, jogging, uh, strength exercises. This is more of like tug of war when your dog pulls the rope, right? If your dog uh, weighted anything with weighted vests or we pushing a weighted ball push, we call them. any high jumps, those are more straight. Then there's balance exercises. That's more something like balance discs are good for this. We give you the exercises there. Uh, flexibility, there's different types of flexibility. So things like side stretches, pelvic tilts. And then our, my favorite personally is the brain games. Um, we have a range of brain games, magic cup, using a yoga mat. Um, and, I, and a lot of what I take pride in is with the brain games is that you don't have to go to a pet store. And even with a lot of these other uh, things too, you don't have to go to the pet store and spend all this money on create, finding brain games for your dogs. You know, those expensive games. You can make them with, a, with an egg carton. You can put a bunch of a to you can put a bunch of treats in an egg carton and cover it up a little bit and have your dog sniff it. Right, things that you have at home that you can have fun with your dog. You don't have to spend money for. Uh, if you have a yoga mat, we do something called the yoga mat roll up, where your dog can roll a mat and try to find uh, try to find the treats in the mat. So yeah, we really give you a range, everything from physical to mental, and that's kind of how we divide it. Everything's really specific to the type of breed that we have so, uh, that you have. So. Love it. I was going to, I'm glad you mentioned that about it, having simple devices that, that typically can be found in your own uh, household. Under the strength category, you did mention like a balance disc and things like that. Is there um, equipment, like specific equipment that you do recommend? Um, and is that on your website or, or is yeah, it? So we have to give you a, a list of things um, that we recommend. We don't actually endorse really any brands. We just mm -hmm. tell you, um, you know, I like to have those, those, I don't want to say the brand, but a uh, fee makes a good dog collar that uh, Driggs wears that just tracks his steps. So I like to always have that. Like when he runs, I tend to take him off leash. So I always want to just for uh, safety purposes to always know where he is because I could track where he is also tracks his steps. So that's good to kind of see the amount of steps he has. We also, uh, you uh, recommend, you know, if your dog is, for example, a working dog, right? Weighted vest. So X dog makes a great one. So we recommend a weighted vest. Um, and yeah, we recommend a range of things that you can get to help make the workouts better, but it's not required. You can, a, a lot of these exercises right. you do without any type of equipment. Fantastic. And all that is on your website though, as far as Correct. the recommended equipment, if, if people so chose you, to go there. Yeah, in the, learning, in the learning modules on the member site, once you, uh, you know, when you purchase the plans, you get full access to everything. And not only do you see the exercises and understand the exercises, you also see everything you would need for the exercises as well. Fantastic. One, one thing I don't think we've mentioned yet is that you also have workouts that don't require a lot of space. And, you know, sometimes I've run into that as a practitioner as well. Like I, I have a mobile practice and I'll go into people's homes and sometimes they'll say, oh, I don't know if there's enough room to do the physical therapy with my pet here. And I'm like, I don't need a lot of space to give them a good workout, you know. I, and so I, I love the fact that you emphasize that on your website as well. And I think, yeah, and what, what's important is that I actually, when I created Pet Fitness, I was living in a five, 600 square foot apartment in New York, like a tiny one bedroom apartment. I was able to do most of the exercises with Driggs. So I think, uh, I think that's what I really am really happy most about and really take great pride in is my initial intentions of creating Pet Fitness before it really got 
you know, started creating all these plans specific is more for the average pet owner to be like, wow, I never thought of that. I can do that. That's so easy. Like things like magic cop or yoga mat, some of the things that we do, they would never know to do, but it doesn't really take any space. For example, uh, Driggs, my dog, what really tires him is that I have him go up and down the couch. Like he only jumps on the couch when, you know, when I tell him to. And when I say, go up, go down, go up, go down. And it really tires him. If you have your dog jump up and down for a minute straight, they will be exhausted. So it's little things like that, that really don't take any space that that's really simple to do. And not only that, just besides the fitness with your pet, it also does uh, build great experience and great bonding. And uh, yeah, so that's a really great thing that we provide as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rich can, I'm sorry, Chris, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to to emphasize again. So when people elect to do the program, it's inherently built in to the specific pro- program that their pet will have an appropriate balance of, ele- of activities. Yeah. Um, what I mean is you know, not just balance activities, but again, a blend of strength, endurance, power, flexibility, mental stimulation, and so forth. Yeah. But people can also choose to work on a specific category if they have maybe a specific goal in mind or um, there's a deficit that they want to to address um, that they've noted in their pet. But those are also categorized so they would know as the, the user of the website, geez, I'm only doing endurance exercises and I know that's not good because they've educated me otherwise. And so then they would have the option to pick from the other categories as well to help to ensure that that appropriate mix of activities, correct? Yes, that's correct. And I think the one thing that we're still trying to figure out to make it even better and working on optimizing is what is the percentage of each exercise should focus on balance versus endurance versus strength, mm-hmm. et cetera, versus brain games. Um, just from being a personal trainer and from my experiences, I would say that each plan, a majority of the exercises focus more on the strength and endurance, right? Really for weight loss, you know, muscle growth, that that doesn't happen through obviously like flexibility, it can, it indirectly could happen, but um, our bigger focus is through strength and endurance, um, but we also do give, you know, balance, flexibility, and, and brain gains. I would say strength, endurance, and brain gains are more, have a majority of the, of the, the a majority in the plans and then balance and flexibility is a small amount, but it's still included as well. Just like most pro- uh, programs, probably the people do for exercise, a lot of their focus would be strength and endurance mainly. Um, and then a small part, maybe the end of their workout would be more stretching, balance, et cetera. So it kind of follows that. That's interesting. Cause I think as rehabbers, Kathy, we probably bias more toward movement, flexibility, balance, core strength, um, and then, of course, the the brain games. But that might mm-hmm. be because we're working with older, you know, pets or injured pets. I mean, yeah, obviously, we have surgery, to do strength, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that as well. But I, I did want to ask you, Rich. You know, I know in in the human studies, in terms of weight loss, um, they say that you know it's really about eighty percent is is due to calorie restriction and your food intake and 20% of weight loss is uh, affected by exercise. Do you know if that's the same for pets? That's a great, great question. And what I can say is I do not know the answer to that. Um, But what I uh, can say is that we don't really, and this is important to preface that we don't want to really focus on too much on the nutrition, too much on the discipline training. People ask us, is this focused on, you know, making my dog more disciplined, teaching them tricks? No, we just want to focus on the the really the fitness, the exercise aspect. We do give some tips on um, some nutritional habits, but not really much. Um, but to be honest, I know that, uh, you know, Dre's looks really healthy. Everyone who's done, we're actually in the process within the next about month or so, we've had a few dogs do the pet fitness plans and they've seen great transformations as a result, not even changing any of their food intake, just, just doing the exercise that we've seen some great weight loss. Um, and we're going to be publishing those within the next month. So, uh, we definitely would like to maybe down the line, talk more about the nutrition, but I can't really comment much more on that besides that this exercise is what we believe is a lot more efficient than just an, uh, a typical walk. Well, I appreciate that, that, um, you know, your honesty there and you've got to start somewhere. And I also am excited about your investment into, you know, further research and studies, because to be honest, 
I don't think we know about, a lot about this area. And, uh, you know, so you being on kind of the, the ground floor and, you know, being able to get, uh, you know, hundreds and thousands and of users, you know, and, and their pets um, in a program, you can simply by taking before and after pictures. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and, and I want to t- talk about, too, just briefly about food. We talk about it briefly. You know, we talk about, you know, the comp- there are components of what makes up healthy pet food, right? Digestibility and bioavailability, right? So that's kind of what we say to look for. Um, but I look at it like this. Dogs are not as instinctively picky. So I think um, if you have the right combination of aroma or texture, macronutrient profile, your dog will be more than satisfied. It's a combination of good, healthy pet food with the exercises laid out in pet fitness. We are more than convinced and that it will bring a lot better health and for, for your pet. And, uh, you know, that's what we're excited to show. And, you know, we've been collecting a lot of before after pictures and really excited to show everyone, you know, the, the results from that. I just want to summarize because I know um, this was on your website. And I think this, as we're closing, is kind of a good summation uh, for me. And that your goal, I think, Rich, is that you are trying to enhance performance, decrease injuries and ultimately improve your pet's quality of life through fitness. That is correct. And and oftentimes what prevents someone from, you know, doing any form of exercise, they don't know what to do. So we want to just provide a way that's easy and simple for someone to follow, you know, to, to do exercise with their pets. So yes, you are absolutely right about that. And your website is so easy to, to navigate and it is just full of information. Are there any other uh, pearls of information or last thoughts that you want to leave our listeners with? Uh, yeah, just check out the plan on, on pet.fitness. Um, and we look forward to helping your dog worldwide. And uh, you know, stay tuned. In 2023, we'll be coming out with cats <laughs> hopefully soon. And uh, Yes, really I'm excited to see it. Um, but Rich, before we go, can you just let people know where they can find you, your website, your social yeah. media? So uh, our website is pet.fitness, so no .com is needed, just pet.fitness. Our socials, TikTok is Pet Fitness, on YouTube is Pet Fitness, and Instagram is Go Pet Fitness. Thanks, Got Rich. We follow, you, we follow you. That's how I found you. We follow you on Instagram. Awesome. Yes. I'm very happy you did. And all of this information, per usual, will be in our show notes. Uh, check it out. Uh, it's a good value for your investment of only $97. And uh, we're, we're definitely fans, Rich. So thank you so much thank for your you, time Rich. today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed our show. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Petability Podcast. For more information about Kathy's books and living with blind dogs, please visit EnableYourPet.com. Thank you, and please tune in next time.